Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. How about the board? Is it uh, visible? The board is visible, sir. Okay, right. So, few things uh, before we start the lectures. First thing I have uh, sent the copy of the lectures uh, uploaded actually to LMS. Have you all seen that? Have you all received that? Yeah? Batch webs? Have you all seen that? <coughs> At least? Yes, sir. All right. So that is the first thing. Uh, second thing, uh, there's a table which I have already uploaded. So you need a copy of that also. Not today, maybe. <coughs> but uh, for the next classes, we need the copy of the table that I have been sent. Uh, what is that table? Binomial table, right? Uh, table called as binomial. I think uh, you have received that also, right? Yes? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, how about uh, the third thing? Uh, I have sent you a tutorial. I have uh, given you a tutorial uploaded uh, to LMS. Did you see that? Jeffrey, are you around? Jeffrey, are you around? Come, sir, Kani? Yes, sir. So, uh, the tute also there, right? So, what you all can do is uh, you can try the tute as a homework. If uh, necessary, I may ask you to submit. Uh, I'm not sure when. Uh, so, be prepared and keep ready, right? All these uh, uh, tutorials. So, that is tutorial one. Probably after teaching some more stuff, uh, I will send you the tutorial number two as well, tutorial number two as well, right? Right, I think uh, we will start for the day. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, a new topic, types of variables, types of variables. Can somebody tell me how in general form, how we can uh, divide the variables, how we can divide the variables. Mainly in a broader sense, uh, we can uh, categorize variable into two groups. Uh, one is called as qualitative variable, right? Qualitative variable mean when uh, you repeat uh, in measurements, uh, the measurements value can change. So there is no any exact uh, me measuring scale to measure that variable, right? Uh, so qualitative variables, uh, basically, values are text. We also call them uh, string variables, right? Uh, for example, uh, male and female. We cannot uh, measure uh, the using the scale. So by visual, we just identify the qualities of variables uh, attitudes. So male and female, sex is a qualitative variable. Color, right? Color. When you have a distinct color like black, white, uh, it's easy. Everybody says it is black, it is white, and so on. But if you have a very close uh, two colors, then if you ask two different person, they will answer two different uh, color names. So color is another variable which can be categorized into qualitative variable. Next one is uh, taste. Taste, uh, right? For example, if you cook a meal, if you give it to person one, that person might say salt, not enough salt. If you give it to second person, he might say too much of salt. 
if you give it to the third person he might say appropriate amount of soul has been added so you see which one is correct yeah which one is correct first person second person or third person same food same food given to three different people one says uh, less amount of salt the second one say it is high amount of salt the third one says it is uh, the exact uh, salt has been added so no problem with the salt so which who is correct we have to assume all three are correct why because uh, that is a personal things right similarly taste flavor the sourness all uh, different flavors are uh, qualitative variable the other major variable is called as quantitative variable where we can quantify the variable quantitative variable we can quantify the variable we can uh, measure the variables uh, 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 for example height so if you measure the height of a tree let's say whether person 1 is measuring or whether the person 2 is measuring both will have a uh, same value all right tree will have the constant value a particular tree will have a constant value so the value doesn't change whether a measures or whether b measures so that kind of variable is called as quantitative variable they are numeric variables numeric numbers what are the numbers right they are numeric variable so this numeric variable can further divide into two groups that is called as the <coughs> discrete variable discrete variable continuous variable discrete variable continuous variable when i define these two terms i will define what is discrete variable what is continuous variable okay uh examples weight measuring weight height yield all these are quantitative variable so under the quantitative variable if you further look at the uh, different types of data we can say discrete variable i have already spoken about that uh, which is a quantitative variable discrete a discrete variable right so what is the definition for discrete variable it is containing with uh, it is a quantitative variable no problem right if the sample space contain a finite or countable infinite i have already defined the term finite number infinite number countable infinite number could you remember the first lecture so if you have that uh, nature then countable that is more important right countable in countable finite or infinite numbers of values which is called as discrete variable right i will explain uh, after putting the uh, continuous variable also right we will first uh, look at uh, the discrete variable so what is the example given there what is the example given there how many days did you go to school during the last 10 days right how many days did you go to the school in last 10 days so what could be the answer what are the possible answer what are the possible answer below 10 numbers yeah i am asking exactly the answers exactly the answers i am asking exactly the answers 
it is below 10 fine what are the exactly answer the answer may be one, one two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten answer may be either of this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten if you ask this question out of last 10 days how many days did you attend the school one might say he attended eight days that means he is absent on two days so in this answer when you answer for that question is there is any in between value possible is there is any value in between possible can somebody answer like, uh, sir, I didn't go today 1.5 days to the school. Can somebody say, I didn't go for 1.7 uh, point, I, I attended uh, 7.8 days to the school. I attended 7.8 days to the school. Will it possible? Is it possible to have uh, in between numbers? Can you see the board? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Can you see the board? The numbers uh, are they uh, clear enough? Yes. Right. So, can you answer if, if let's say somebody asks? How many days did you attend to the school? One boy is saying, uh, I went to school 7.8 days. Can you accept the answer? No. 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 Because once you attend the school, yes or no? No other answers. So if you, even if he has attended uh, a half a day, saying that he is uh, sick so that he came home, so automatically he attended the school. Right? So, the important thing in discrete variable is know any in between values. All are full numbers. All are full numbers. Can I say today the attendance in uh, Zoom class attendance, let's say there are 68 uh, attendants. In Zoom class, if somebody asks, how many students uh, logged on to my lectures today? I say uh, today 67.67.9 students attended my Zoom class. Is that correct? Is it possible? No, it is not possible, isn't it? So either you like to say 67. Or 68. Either you like to say 67 or 68 students attended the class. Right? You can't say 67.9 students. So you see the difference. When you say number of uh, chairs in a class, number of household. So those are not coming in decimals, no decimal points. So that is basically called as discrete variable number of students number of schools number of students in a school right number of classes etc etc number of farmers you can't say 13.5 farmers i interviewed 13.5 uh, farmers regarding their income that is wrong so likewise all these uh, types of variables can be categorized as a discrete variable, right? So this is called as discrete variables. How many days did you go to the school? During last 10 days, 10 working days. The other uh, type of data is called as continuous data. Discrete data, continuous data. So these two are actually quantitative data. Don't forget that. These two are coming under the quantitative data. Continuous data, 
it's again quantitative data are called continuous. If the sample space contains an interval or continuous span of real numbers. So we have the example, right? After putting the example, you see weight, temperature, height, all these are possible, right? So what I want to explain is, when you talk about, let's say height, if you say height, height, height of a student, let's say we have a value 170, that is one value, the other value is 171, this is in centimeter, right? So if you measure a particular student, that student's uh, height value is, let's say, 170.6 centimeter. Will this value possible? Will this value possible? The decimal value, you know that term. Yes. It's possible. So this kind of data are called as continuous state. For example, weight, weight data, two kilogram, three kilogram. In between, there are infinite number of smaller units. We can measure in grams, we can measure in milligrams, we can measure in micrograms, etc. etc. So many smaller division as we like, we can do the measurement. So that is the basic difference between discrete variable and the continuous variable. Is it clear? So discrete variables are full numbers, number of computers, number of motorbike, number of chairs, number of uh, 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 vehicles, right? Number of members, etc., etc. All these are numbers. Number of insects, number of insect families, right? Maybe number of uh, uh, order, insect order, right? A number of crops, numbers. All these are numbers. Number of varieties, etc., etc. All these are numbers. Okay. So that is about the discrete and the continuous uh, value. So you see here, even though we say uh, height, you can measure in meters. This height, uh, one height has been measured in uh, meters. You see 1.72 meter. So two decimal. Even we can go up to this decimal. Accurately, if you want to measure, not the height of a person, you cannot measure the height of a person to that accurate. But if you have some uh, instruments to measure the height of something very accurately, <coughs> which it lies accurately, then you can measure even at any point. So this is maybe 10 to the power. We can measure up to 10 to the power minus six meter, isn't it? It goes up to 10 to the power six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Until it's good. Hello. What is happening? Hello, Ratnayaka. Yes, sir. What is happening? You mute your mic. Right. So, here, Sorry, sir. okay. Uh, this is uh, 10 to the power minus 7, you see. So, we can measure up to 10 to the power minus 7 meter. So, that is the speciality of this continuous variable. Right. So, that is the speciality of this continuous variable. So, continuous variable. Uh, can be measured up to any uh, uh, the interval uh, values, any interval values as we like, right? 
Okay, I think uh, we will move to the other slide. Right, so this is the very important topic. Uh, I mean, everybody should know any type of data in the world, any type of data in the world can be put it into this classification category. Any type of data in the world, you can ask any type uh, of data. For example, once we complete this uh, topic, any type of data in the world can be put into, into uh, these categories. I am going to discuss these categories. So this is called as scale of measurement. First one is, uh, first name for the scale of measurement is called as nominal scale, nominal data. Data can be classified or can be measured into four groups. The first group is nominal scale data, right? Nominal scale data. What do you mean by nominal scale data? It is the simplest scale, right? It is the simplest scale identifies group by their numbers, right? Identify the groups by their numbers. For example, color, sex, color. You have different colors, black, white, red, blue, yellow, pink, orange, etc. Different colors. Similarly, sex, male and female, two categories. Families of insects. You learn families of insects. Let's say, uh, uh, what are the families? I mean, families of insects. Can you name some families? Uh, I'm not sure. I couldn't remember exactly. Diptera. Yeah. Diptera. 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 Is it family or order? Order, ne? Yeah, yeah, order. Order, right. So we can say order of. No. Yeah, different order. Fam fam I mean, insecta is a family, I think. Insecta is a family. Uh, some orders of uh, insects, right? Let's say uh, Diptera, as you all said, uh, Hymenoptera, Hemiptera, um, Coleoptera, right? I can still remember some uh, insect uh, order names. Uh, uh, long family or order? Somebody can uh, tell me precisely. This uh, diptera is a family or order? Family. Family, right? Diptera order. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm asking this uh, different category. Diptera, hemiptera, hymenoptera. Uh, all these are called as order or family? Order. Order, right? Yeah, it's order. So you can have uh, different names for uh, these orders. So number of orders, right? Nominal data. It is a nominal data, uh, different orders. Similarly, different microbes. Can you name some microbes? Fungus, bacteria, uh, viruses, uh, what else? Right, amoebas etc etc so microbes so those are different categories nominal type of data pathogens different pathogens right uh, etc can be considered as uh, nominal data this kind of data are always discrete data can you remember we discussed about discrete data so no in between values so numbers number of families number of microbes number of pathogens, number of sex, right? Number, number of colors. So these are discrete data. Uh, don't worry about this uh, red in color, uh, which is uh, basically the type of analysis that we perform for this kind of data, right? Actually, this kind of data, this kind of, uh, data, we cannot uh, rank them. Can we rank this data? Uh, 
let's say we take uh, insect uh, family insect uh, order hemiptera right then uh, somebody said dipter i have uh, considered uh, two uh, order right can we say hemiptera is superior to dipter <coughs> so this is what we call as a rank isn't it can we say hemiptera is superior to dipter or dipter is superior to uh emitter can we say like that yes or no yeah can't you can't say like that right emitter or uh, dipter which is the superior that we cannot say but we can categorize them this insects groups are coming into this group this insects groups are coming to this group we can categorize them no problem but we cannot rank it and say which is superior let's say sex male and female can we say male is superior to female yes can we say male is superior to female no we cannot say right male is superior because these are sex two different sex two different classification two, two different categories we can't say male is superior to female or female is superior to male but in the reality it is different that is a different story but uh, we are talking about in terms of data so we can't say male is superior to female or female is superior to male. that uh, statement we cannot say so likewise we cannot rank them. therefore we can group them i have uh, let's say today i have uh, interviewed 50 farmers right i have interviewed 50 farmers among that we have 39 farmers are male the rest 11 are female like uh, they are let's say widow or whatever it is if you, if you do a small survey in the farming community out of uh, the farm household let's say household the household uh, if you interview the household the leader of the household 50, uh, 39 of them are male let's say 11 are female let's say these are widow females right so this is possible we can categorize the group male and female but we cannot say this is superior to that that is superior to this that business we cannot say so therefore since we are grouping them in statistical point of view we say categorize them categorize grouping categorize them the technique that we are using to analyze the data is called as categorical data analysis don't worry about that we will learn this in the future right we will learn this in the future the type of analysis that you will perform will be called as categorical data analysis right why i am saying is that as we said we have uh, four different classification of uh, data or scale of measurement we cannot apply for all four uh, classification of data the same analysis technique statistically we will have to analyze them different you will learn why it is so that is why this is a, a type of data which is a discrete data we cannot rank them so that the best way to do the analysis of this data is categorical data analysis right the second type of data is called as ordinal data ordinal scale data this ordinal scale data 
provides an rating from most to least. So that is one more additional information coming. It is similar to uh, earlier type of data, but in addition to that, <coughs> but what is uh, here in this type of data is available is we can rank them, we can rate them, we can rate them, you see, we can rate them, rate, rating mean ranking basically, right? So we can rank them which is the most important than the others, we can rank them. So that kind of data is called as ordinal data, mostly we use uh, in that kind of data called as liquor or hedonic scale. Maybe uh, once you come to the food science or animal science, when you do a tasting of different foods, if you do a small analysis on uh, food, uh, different flavor of food, color of food, appearance of food or smell of food, right? All are very important uh, in a food. So when you do analysis to see which food is uh, giving better smell than the other food or which food is giving uh, a good taste, good, right? So likewise, we can do a lot of research on this uh, field. It's called as sensory evaluation, sense, right? Human being sense with the uh, tongue, uh, ear, and the uh, nose, all right, and the eyes. So that uh, the sensor evaluation uh, can be done using this kind of uh, analysis, all right. Uh, I will come to that uh, uh, a little later, um, how uh, further we can divide this into, I mean, strongly say this is a ordinal type of data. Uh, some of the examples, are given as a severity of resistance, mass, turbidity, etc. Right? I will uh, go back to uh, remember these two, three examples. I will ask you. All right? First thing is uh, uh, severity of resistance. Right? Severity of resistance. Uh, we have uh, done a small research for the resistance. Let's say I'm doing uh, resistance for six varieties. Let's say variety one, variety two, variety three, variety four, variety five, variety six. I'm doing a small research with all varieties resistant to one particular disease. Right, I'm introducing the disease and ultimately I am measuring the yield of these six varieties separately. Okay, now I want to see which is having more resistance, how to evaluate this. Let's say, when you say variety one, let's say variety one, we have plants, right? I have planted maybe 100 plants, for example, 100 plants, 100 plants. for variety 1, again 100 plants for variety 2, 100 plants for variety 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I am looking at among these 6 variety, let's say variety 1, almost 85 plants infected, 85 plants infected infected plants, infected number of plants, this is variety, right? B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. So this is uh, 75 plants infected, here uh, 62 plants infected, uh, 80 plants in infected, now uh, here 50 plants infected, here 55 plants infected. 
these are number of plants infected now can you rank them which variety is good for this particular disease these are infected numbers infected plants out of 100 plants yeah which variety is good resistant more resistant v5 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 yes v5 there are only 50 plants infected so v5 is more resistant right what about next one v6 then v4 uh, v2 v3 and v1 you understand so now you see we can rank them right variety 5 is the best more resistant the next v6 if you compare these two right we can say variety 5 is better than variety 6 can we say like that variety 5 is better than variety 6 can somebody say like that yes or no yes yeah, the study we can say variety 5 is better than 6 similarly variety 6 is better than variety 4 so likewise you see the ranking system in the earlier nominal data we cannot do the ranking we cannot do the ranking. We cannot say male is better than female. Right? Here, the ranking is possible. So, that kind of data. Right? So, usually, we categorize them in a research into different categories. Let's say, high resistant. I will put it as high R. Right? Uh, moderate resistant we can have average resistant less resistant right and susceptible You see, we have categories. We have categories. So definitely, high resistant is better than moderate resistant. High resistant is better than the moderate resistant. Moderate resistant is better than average resistant. Average resistant is better than the less resistant. Less resistant is better than the sustained. You see, we can rank them. So that is the speciality of this data. Right, now, I'll take one more example. What is the second example that we have? Marks. Right, marks is a quantitative data. Don't forget that it is a quantitative data, but it is an ordinal data. right okay why is that uh, in your uh, university uh, what, what are the grades a for a what is the marks uh, that you should obtain more than 85 more than 85 85 or more than 85 all right Let's say, what about uh, this is A? What about A minus? Anybody? 75. Right. I'll, I'll take only these two examples. The rest uh, you can um, keep it up. So here, this demarcations are called as arbitrary demarcations, arbitrary demarcations. 
right? Maybe if you go to some other place, if you go to some other university, they may give A to maybe more than or uh, equal to 80 marks. More than or equal to 80 marks. We'll be getting A. So there is no any exact boundary as it is. Right? So this boundaries, this uh, intervals, in other terms, these intervals are called as arbitrary, arbitrary intervals. Arbitrary intervals. Arbitrary intervals mean these intervals can change. There's no any fixed uh, hard and fast rule. There's no any Bible or Quran or Bhagavad Gita or, or, or Mahavansa or whatever it is. Nothing is there as such to say this is uh, the fact. This is the value for A, this is the value for B, and so on. So this is an arbitrary intervals. So that's why months are uh, called as ordinal data. But we can rank, can we rank, do you think A is better than A minus or A minus is better than A? Can we rank like this? A is better than A minus. Right? A is better than A minus. A minus better than B plus. So that for sure. Right? But it is an ordinal data. The other thing that we can put uh, forward in mass is that can I say, let's say a student one and student two, All right? Student one got 40 marks, student two got 80 marks. Right, student one got 40 marks, student two got 80 marks. Can I say student two having twice the knowledge as student one? Can I say student two is having twice the knowledge as student one? No. Yes or no? No. No, we cannot say. Why? Why can't we say like that? You are right. Only measured one parameter. Yes, once again. Only measured one parameter. No, no, I am asking after measuring the one parameter. Let's say this is uh, mathematics. Let's say this is uh, a statistics. How is that? Let's say it is a statistics. Right? So, first person got uh, 40 marks, second person got 80 marks. Can I say second person is having twice the knowledge on statistics as the first person? That is my question. Yes or no? Arosha, now can you answer? Can't say like that. Uh, we can't say. Yes or no? We, can we say like that? No, we cannot. No, no. We cannot. Arusha, I get a baila ya na ho, you know? Mali. Ah? Mali like that. 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 Right. Uh, so, uh, we cannot say actually, student 2 is having twice the knowledge on statistics as students, student 1. He cannot say, isn't it? That we cannot say. But we can say, student, who is better student in statistics? Who is better student in statistics? Student 2. Student 2. So, we can say, student 2 is having 
better knowledge or higher knowledge on statistics compared to student math. Can we say like that? Yes. We can say student two is having better statistics compared to student math. that we can say, but we cannot scale it. Student two is having twice the knowledge as student one. That we cannot scale. So that is that is the problem in this kind of data, right? So this kind of data, therefore, it's ordinal data. You got it? So this kind of data are called as ordinal data. Any questions? So this kind of data. We can rank them, right? We can rank them. Therefore, the test that we perform is called as non-parametric test. Non-parametric test. Right? Can you remember what are the param parameters? Can you I discuss you about uh, with the parameters? Can you remember? What are the population parameters? What are the population parameters? What are, what are the population parameters? Mean. Population mean and the population age. Population mean is mu, population variance is sigma square. So these are the parameters. So using this parameter, if you do testing, it is called as parametric test. Parametric test. Can you all see the board? Can you all see the board? Population mean, population variance, mu, and sigma. Mean. Square. Using this uh, information, if you do the test, it is called as parametric test. So, what do you mean by non parametric test? What do you mean by that? without using these two information? If you do the test, statistical test, it is called as non parametric test. In simple term, just to understand. Right, so that is about the non parametric test. So, here also you perform a non parametric test for uh, ordinal type of data. Right, so can somebody tell me what is this uh, Likert and hedonic scale? Can somebody tell me what is this Likert and the hedonic scale? Have you learn about this scale? system in uh, food science or main science what is this hedonic and uh, Likert scale so that scale can range from any value starting from 1 to 5 for example or 1 to 7 so that means 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 to 7 means it is 1 2 Three and goes up to seven. So, can you all see, read the board? Can you read the board? Is the values are clear enough? Yes. Sir. So, suppose I will take the first one. Right, one to five. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So these are scale. Let's say I have a cook food. I have a three people. Person, first person, second person, third person. I'm asking uh, the first person to taste and give the rank. He say it is a very good, nice, excellent food. So he is ranking. These are the rank. 
he is ranking it as a five. This is Excel. So this is Excel. This is very bad. So this is excellent. This is very bad. So this is uh, bad. For example, this is okay. This is good. As an example, right? So now you are giving to these three people. They are tasting it. One says it is uh, excellent. The first person says it is excellent. You give the same food to the second person, another piece, all right? Second person says, uh, oh, good, okay, no problem. The third person might say, oh, yeah, it's okay. Let's get, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's okay. Neither good nor bad, all right? Okay, so just to eat, uh, uh, without any taste or so rather than not saying bad. So he's just consumed, right? Okay. So these are the ranks. So definitely five is better than four. Four is better than three. So this is called as rank. So this kind of ranking is uh, called as hedonic or liquor scale ranking system, right? Uh, especially people who are doing food science uh, research in your final year, you will be coming across uh, a lot of uh, this kind of uh, ranking system. Okay, where we cannot uh, consider, we cannot consider what these two parameters. What are those two parameters? Mean and the variance of population. So without considering mean and the variance of the population, here we do the analysis. So actually we take median to do the analysis. We don't need to worry about that because we are not learning non-parametric in this course, I think. Right? So mean and median are not used. So that is called as non-parametric test. Clear? Right. This is the third type of data is called as interval data. Interval data. So you can read it out. It's an ordinary uh, ordinal scale that has an addition of uh, equal distance between the points. All right. That is the important of that. So the intervals are not arbitrary. Can you remember? In the ordinal data, we said that intervals are arbitrary. Here, the intervals are not arbitrary. Intervals are equal distance, constants. Intervals are constants. And what is the problem with this kind of data is true zero is not existing. What is the problem with this data? True zero is not existing. It is not existing. True zero is not existing. Right? True zero is not existing. That is the most important thing. True zero is not existing in this particular type of data. Uh, let's look at some, uh, the, some examples uh, and look at what type of uh, analysis that is uh, performed. So the examples, temperatures, dates, dollars, years, sea level, etc, etc. I will give uh, uh, elaboration on these examples. Uh, so based on this uh, type of data, interval scale data, we can do either parametric or non-parametric test. So we can, first time calling it as parametric test. So we can do a parametric test as well, all right? Based on the type of uh, information that we have, we can perform parametric test also, all right? Right, now, you remember the examples for the interval data. What are the examples? We said 
temperature. I will take temperature first. Temperature. We said uh, true zero is not existing. How do we measure the temperature? What are the units available to measure the temperature? Celsius, Fahrenheit. Yeah, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Let's say zero degree Celsius is equal zero degree Fahrenheit. Is that true? Zero degree Celsius is equal to zero degree Fahrenheit. Is that true? No. no. So, what about zero degree Fahrenheit is equal equal in Fahrenheit? What is the Fahrenheit? Zero degree is equal? Anyone? Right. In Fahrenheit, zero degree is equal in Fahrenheit. Anybody? I don't, I couldn't remember exactly the conversion. Uh, 32 minus 8 divided by something. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Anybody? So we said uh, these are not equal. Zero degree. So which zero is true? Zero. Zero degree Fahrenheit. Is it that true zero? Or oh, zero degree centigrade? Is that zero? Which one is zero? Actual zero. We don't want, we want actual value of zero. Huh? Anyone? I'll take another example. We said C level, mean C level. Mean C level. Right. What do you think about the? Can you identify the zero level of mean sea level? Zero level of mean sea level. Maybe thirty years ago, mean zero level. Right. Can you remember, nowadays we are talking about uh, climate change, uh, global warming, etc, etc. The mean sea level that we have measured. What do you mean by mean sea level? Arosha? Anyone? Elevation according to the sea. No, mean sea level. No, no, I'm asking zero mean sea level. Sorry, zero means sea level. Elevation according to the sea level. That is true when you want to measure the elevation. We measure the elevation based on the mean sea level. That is right. So I am asking, what do you mean by zero mean sea level? Hmm? What do you mean by mean zero? Uh, sorry, zero mean uh, sea level. Bottom of the sea. Huh? Bottom of the sea. Bottom of the sea. Can you guess what is the uh, depth of the sea? Bottom of the sea? How do you say bottom of the sea? So in this uh, graph, can you tell me the mean sea level, uh, the zero mean sea level measured at point A, at point B, at point C. This point is C. C. Huh? C. Point C. Yeah, C. Right. So that is the uh, the highest uh, tight point, highest tight point of a C. Right. So that is called as mean C level. So thirty years ago. Let's say this was the mean sea level. C, the position C is the mean sea level. 
Now, after 30 years, <coughs> what has happened to the mean sea level? Whether it has gone up or gone down? Gone up. Gone up. So now the mean sea level is somewhere there because of uh, the global warming and uh, you can say whatever the uh, reason behind. You see, so which zero is true? The zero at 30 years ago or zero at uh, now? Which zero is true zero of sea level? <coughs> no, I'm, I'm asking the question. Which zero is true? So we cannot answer, is it? Which zero is uh, zero? Like this. Right? That is second example. Third example, the year. Can you tell me zero year? So, Jesus Christ born how many years before? Any Christians? Jeffrey? How many years ago? Jesus Christ born in born 20, 2020 years before. Right? What about uh, Lord Buddha? Born? I don't know exactly. 2560 or 70 years before. Right? You see? So these are the years back. Now, can you tell me exactly the zero year? Zero year means the year started uh, zero year. From starting from zero. No, can't. can't say. So, that, those are the things, right? As uh, we said, these are called as interval data. I just uh, said about uh, there are no zeros are not existing for these type of data. Right, now there is a good thing about this, this data. This data is better than the ordinary type of data. Why? Let's say we have uh, the interval. Let's say this is a temperature uh, in uh, degree centigrade. We will consider in degree centigrade, right? Uh, in centigrade, right? Uh, so that uh, this is uh, 30 degree centigrade, this is 40 degree centigrade, this is 50 degree centigrade. In centigrade, these are 30, 40, 50 degree centigrade. Now, let me uh, talk about a small scale scheme. We have smaller divisions in both cases. What do you think about these intervals? Is this intervals are arbitrary or this like the mass? In the mass, the intervals are arbitrary. How about here? <coughs> is this interval is fixed or is it an arbitrary interval? Fixed. Fixed. Yeah, these intervals are fixed. So the increase in temperature from 30 to 40 is same as on a scale increase of temperature from 40 to 50. So how the temperature increase from 30 to 40 is similar way increasing on a scale basis 40 to 50. <coughs> These scales are the scale I think. Uh, can you all see? Can you all see me? Yes sir. Yes sir. There's a power cut here that is why I'm asking. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, now generator has been started. Yeah, uh, so 30 to 40, the increasing scale is same as 40 to 50. That is the speciality of this type of data. So, this is the interval data. The other information that I would like to draw is I say this. This container is having uh, water. This container also having water. 
this is uh, 40 degrees centigrade. This is 80 degree centigrade. Can you all see 40 degree centigrade and 80 degree centigrade, two jars of water. Now can I say this is jar one, this is jar two. If you can't see the color of the pen, you'll have to tell me, right? Then I can change the color of the pen. <coughs> you'll have to speak out, right? If you have any problem, you'll have to tell because I'm not going to blame anybody. So just tell if you have any problem, uh, visualize. The people who are having PC, yeah? if you are looking at phone, I cannot help anything. But uh, for, even if it is uh, not visible for PC, something wrong with the uh, uh, color. Can you all see, Arosha? Can you see? Yes, I can. Right. Okay, so now my question is, can we say jar 2 is twice the hot as jar 1? Can we say jar 2 is twice the hot as jar 1? Anyone? So the water in jar 2 is twice the hot as jar 1. Yes. Yes, we can say. Like earlier, here we can say this is twice the hot as this. Definitely. Isn't it? So for example, uh, I say one this is uh, candy is, for example, candy is uh, 450 meter above the sea level, candy, as an example. Then uh, let's say uh, rum powder, that is uh, in Nuvarelia district, rum powder, it is 900 meter. Candy is uh, 450 meter. From the mean sea level, <coughs> Ramboda is 900 meter from the mean sea level. Can we say Ramboda is twice the height as uh, Candy? <coughs> Can we say Ramboda is twice the height from the mean sea level, uh, mean, uh, sea level as uh, Candy? Yes or no? No. Why? Why? Because this is uh, 450, this is 900. So he is having twice the height as uh, can be. We can say. <coughs> yes? Can we say like? Yes, we can say. We can say. So that is the speciality of this uh, data, interval data, but they don't have true zero, that is the problem. True zero is not existing, but we can compare two different sets of data, <coughs> right? Uh, you can compare the height of the Himalaya versus height of the uh, Kilimanjaro, which is in uh, Tanzania, right? So height, I mean, uh, the elevation, this is uh, thrice or oh, four times of Kilimanjaro. So let's say, uh, what do you call, uh, Himalaya is four times. I don't know, but I'm just saying. Himalaya is four times higher than Kilimanjaro. We can say like that. <coughs> Isn't it? We can compare, no problem. In earlier case, marks we cannot compare. Why? Why we cannot compare? Because Totally, those are different scales. Sometimes some universities give 80 marks for A, some give 85. Can we compare these two university A's? No, because one university gives above 80, maybe A. The other university gives above 85, maybe A. We can't compare these two A's. 
<coughs> isn't it so but here whether you measure i measure who measures the height will not change right so we can compare so that is the type of data called as interval data let's look at the last type of data actually we are going a little slowly but doesn't matter we have enough time the last type of data sorry is called as ratio scale data ratio scale data right so in the interval data the intervals are not arbitrary so these intervals are fixed interval no problem right but only problem is the zero value but in the ratio scale data right in the ratio scale data true zero does exist true zero does exist uh, some example height weight yield etc etc we can use the parametric test we can use the parametric test so i will uh, talk about this uh, interval data sorry the ratio data right the ratio data i will give an example if you take uh, weight right if you take weight this is uh, 70 kg this is 80 kg this is 90 kg what about the scales here let's say the scale here is a the scale here is b is it equal scale or different scale is it equal scale or different scale yeah equal scale equal scale it is same as the uh, earlier data that what is that interval data right right equal scale data equal scale data okay uh when you talk about uh, equal scale data it is similar to the interval data as well right uh but in addition to that here zero also exists right let's take a, a simple example kilogram this is pounds if you measure in kilograms or pounds 1 kilogram is equal 2.2 pounds 2 kilogram equal 4.2 pounds 4.4 pounds right so now 0 kilogram is equal 0 pounds can we say like that 0 kilogram is equal 0 pounds no can't and we say like that 0 kilogram is equal 0 pounds can we say 0 kilogram is equal 0 pounds let's say i have uh, 10 inches 10 inches is equal 24 cm can i say like that can you remember your engineering 10 inches uh, equal 24 cm can i say like that yes yes right good now look at very carefully 5 inches i say 12 cm can i say like that 
Yes. Zero inches equal to zero centimeter. Can I say like that? No. No. Why are you shy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh. yes, yes. Zero inches. Can I say it's equal to zero centimeter? Yes, we can. So the true zero is there, even though. In earlier case, in temperature, we are not sure about which one is zero. Zero degree centigrade, zero degree Fahrenheit. They are not equal. But here, these zeros are even different scales. The zeros are same. So that is what I asked here. Zero kilogram is equal to zero pounds. Pounds mean not the uh, sterling pounds. Huh? I am talking about the ratal, ratal in single. In Tamil, Ratha. Cyber kilogram. Cyber Ratha like a Kilogram Bindua. Ratha Bindua like a chaman. Is that statement wrong or correct? Scale wise, that's correct. Huh? Yeah, I couldn't hear. Scale like this, can't do that. Yeah, I am talking about scale. Yeah, different. Because earlier we talked about temperature, now I am talking about this is a different scale, right? If you go to uh, UK, uh, you cannot talk about kilogram. Although Britannia, Guyana, if you go to Britain, Britain, you never ever talk about the kilogram. Always in pounds, rata, right? So, so I'm asking whether this zero is equal to zero. Yes, that is true. So that's why we are saying the true, uh, true zero is existing. But this is correct. Similarly, this is also correct. Both are correct. Right? The other thing is, if you want to compare this, uh, because it is a ratio data, look at kilogram two divided by one. What is the ratio? Two. Two divided by one. What about the pounds? Four point four divided by two. Sorry, uh, two point two. Four point four divided by two point two. Which is two. So you see, the ratio also exists. Right? Ratio also exists. So that is the speciality of this kind of data. So that is why it's called as ratio data, right? That is why it's called as ratio data, right? Any questions on this scale of measurement? If not, we will go to the probability distributions, right? Just uh, don't look at the notes. Look at uh, my uh, uh, look at the board just to introduce what is this distribution. What is the distribution? Right? Let's say I have the class interval. I have the class interval. These class intervals are very narrow class interval. Let's say I have very small class intervals with the frequency. This is frequency. These are class intervals. Right? If you have such kind of uh, frequency distribution, if you connect the upper position of all the bars, right, it will connect like this. Right? 
So that is called as a distribution. The frequency actually, how the respective value for each classes uh, gives the, with the frequencies is uh, basically called as distribution. So you see, if you erase all these bar charts, this look like distribution. Right? So this is called as distribution. Okay? We'll talk about this probability a little later. So this is uh, distribution. Right. A probability distribution provides the possible values of the random variable. So random variable, random mean the variable which can take any value on a random basis, right? So that is called as random variable. So it provides the possible values of a random variable and their corresponding probabilities. So here we talk about frequencies. Hereafter, on y-axis, this frequency will convert into probabilities. Actually, probabilities is same as frequency. So in this case, Earlier case we learn about frequencies. Now it will be talking about probabilities, right? We will define the term probabilities later. A probability distribution can be in the form of a table, graph, or mathematical form. So in this case, it is a graph. Otherwise, you can have the table. <coughs> For example, you have the class interval and the frequencies, right? You have the values for class interval and the frequencies. So this is in the table table form, right? Or it will be in the mathematic formula. So uh, if you fit a model, if you fit a model, you can say this is a formula which you can derive the probability for each class interval, right? So it can be either table, graph, or mathematical formula. Right, let's look at what are the distributions that is available, not all the distribution. I have listed some of the distributions that we are going to learn, right? some of the distributions that we are going to learn. So this distribution will be based on the quantitative data that we have already classified. How we classified the quantitative data into two major categories, discrete and continuous. What is the difference between these uh, two types of data, discrete and continuous? Anyone? Between intervals, mm. countable. Yeah, discrete is countable. There is no any interval, no decimal points, right? In discrete data, in continuous, you can have any number of uh, in uh, finite numbers in between two major numbers, right? Uh, so that is called as continuous data, right? So for the continuous data, we have this kind of different types of distribution. Normal distribution, uniform distribution, high-square distribution. Uh, then we have exponential distribution, log normal distribution, viable distribution, Z distribution, F distribution, T distribution, gamma distribution, beta distribution. <clears throat> there are some other distributions also, but these are the major ones. But in our course, we will learn about only four of them. Normal distribution. We may learn this at last. 
can you remember in the last class the last slide is uh, a distribution which is a uniform distribution look at your notes in the last class last slide i mentioned about this distribution it is flat right so we will talk about normal distribution then we will talk about uh, chi square distribution then we talk about z distribution actually these two have a link these two distribution have a link this z distribution also called as standard std standard normal distribution this c distribution also called as standard normal distribution we can write it there huh? c distribution is called as standard normal distribution right the other distribution is t distribution we will learn about that also then we will learn about f distribution these are the four five distributions that we will learn in this particular course normal distribution uniform distribution chi square distribution z distribution t distribution z mean z distribution o it is also called as standard normal distribution and the f distribution <coughs> discrete distribution we have we, <coughs> there are so many discrete distribution sorry but the two distributions that we are going to learn is binomial distribution and the poisson distribution <coughs> binomial distribution and poisson distribution so these are the two distributions that we are going to learn okay that we are going to learn two distribution that we are going to learn right now let's look at uh, the different types of distributions today we have a bit of a theory what is a random variable how we can define the term random variable variable you know it uh, vary with uh, object to object so that it is called as variable the opposite to the variable is constant right so what is a random variable random variable is a numerical measure of the outcome from a probability experiment so its a value is determined by chance so this value of this uh, probability value will determined by chance all right random variable are denoted using letters such as x so you don't need to indicate the, the random variable as x maybe a random variable y z and so on. so usually we denote it as x right it is a numerical measure of outcome from a probability experiments right okay so it's uh, it's a value it's determined for example for example uh, we will talk about that later, uh, later in detail right i'm going to toss a coin <coughs> i'm going to toss a coin what are the possible chances head or tail head is possible or tail is possible right now what are the because when you toss two coins let's say i have i'm going to toss a two coins i'm going to toss a toss two coins so let's say x is a variable random variable as you have said random variable
x is a random variable we are getting head in the toss getting head in the toss now tell me what are the possibilities are there in getting heads how many heads are possible possible number of heads two times two times is possible what about other times zero time is it possible when you toss a coin two times when you toss a coin two times can we get uh, both times tail if we get tail on both time what is the outcome of a head zero zero so we may have a chance to get zero also as the outcome head is the target random variable for us so what is the other possibility getting out of two tosses there may be a chance that uh, no heads that is zero what is the other possibility getting one head or getting both coin as head that is maximum two so these are called as right random variable these are called as random variable so these are taking some values probability these are possible values zero is possible one is possible two is possible what about three is it three possible in that uh, event i am tossing two coins can we get three heads no can no we can so that is not possible so these are the this is called random variable when you toss a coin getting number of heads is called as this is a random variable so but here specifically we are focusing on getting number of heads right we will talk about this in uh, detail later uh, so this is uh, what we call as random variable so random variable has a chance they have the chance this is uh, probability so here we can i'm not going to talk about probability now so each will have some chance to occur do you agree each each cases zero number of heads has some chance to occur one head some chance to occur two heads some chance to occur right so that is a uh, chance to occur so that is called as this chance to occur of each value of the random variable is called as probability okay so <clears throat> right now i am adding a term called as discrete random variable <coughs> I am adding a word, discrete random variable. <coughs> right? Is it the same definition as earlier? Only the difference is the term discrete. <coughs> Can you remember we talked about continuous and discrete? Right? So I will uh, just uh, coming to the board. Now let's say this is a typical example for discrete random variable. Getting number of heads in two tosses is a typical discrete random variable. Why? Can you remember discrete? We talked about discrete. Will it possible to have half head? We can have zero head is possible, one head is possible. Will there be a value in between? Will there be a value in between? Yes or no? No. No possible. Will there be a value between one and two? No possibilities. 
So these are full because we will get either one head or two head or zero head. We cannot get uh, two point five head or two point three head. That is not possible. So therefore, this is called as discrete random variable. I mean, in this example, this is called as discrete random variable. Continuous, we will see later. This is called as discrete random variable. Clear? So discrete random variable is nothing else. The random variable we have defined, where this will take only the discrete values. Right? So you can read the definition. It's a countable, right? Finite number of possible values or a countable number of possible values. Countable number. As we uh, said in our example, zero possible, one possible, or two possible. The continuous random variable is slightly different. All right? I will take another example for continuous random variable. Is the random variable that has an infinite number of possible values that is not countable? So you have the notes. I will just. Uh, Let's take uh, the height. Height uh, of our students, we have put it into different category. 175, right? 176, 177. These are the height. Huh? We have some value above. Don't worry about that. I just put this is height. In centimeter. How many students? Uh, this is probably right. How many students coming in this category? Right. Let's say we have some value. We have some value among uh, the university students. We have done a survey so that we have measured the height of the school. Now. This is a random variable. This is a random variable. Right? Whether it is a continuous or discrete random variable. To see that, what about the outcome? Whether we can can we have students? What is the proportion of students having height uh, 174 uh, 75.8? Can we have uh, the proportion of students uh, in that group, 175.8? Will there be possible to get the in-between values? Like earlier case. In earlier case, we said we cannot have the in-between value. These are full numbers. Will it possible in this case to have in-between values? Yes. Yes, possible. So these values are continuous. So I showed you only one value, but uh, you can write any number of values in between these two full figures. So that is why this is called as continuous random variable. Height is a continuous random variable. All right? Continuous random variable. Crossing a coin, is a discrete random variable. We practically we will see some of the other discrete random variables. Out of 10 days, how many days that you have visited school? Is it a continuous random variable or discrete random variable? Discrete random variable. Yes, discrete random variable. Right? So this is called as a discrete, I mean, uh, the random variable is always, you know what is a uh, random variable, whether it is a discrete or random, by variable by variable, you should understand that. Number of rainy days, out of 200, uh, 
let's say out of 365 days number of rainy days number of rainy days is it discrete or uh, continuous discrete discrete because we are talking about number of rainy days you can't say two and a half days three and a half days if it is rains today it's a rain totally today it's rain whether it is 5 mm or 1 mm or 100 mm rain is rain right okay so discrete uh, so discrete random variable number of uh, absentees to the class today is it discrete or random discrete discrete yeah discrete so likewise we can specify the discrete and random variables right sorry a discrete and continuous uh, random variables right uh i will have some uh, examples uh, of a tv sales center right this is a sales center tv television selling center <coughs> a uh, discrete uh, random variable with finite number of values right so it is a discrete is it it number of selling tvs is it discrete or run, uh, continuous discrete yeah it is discrete for example right let's say x number of tv sold at the stores in a in one day so in that uh, shop uh, how many television number of television sold where x can take on a values 0 0 is possible that means no sale at all one is possible some days there may be one television only sold two is possible three is possible four is possible and so on. so any number is possible right so i have taken the example as such right take uh, another example Uh, discrete uh, sorry same example because it is finite here we are talking about finite the the in the store we can simply say how much sales uh, would be uh in a discrete random variable with a infinite sequence of values are possible infinite we don't know exactly what is the total right infinite let the number of customers arriving in one day so that uh, that is also sometimes finite but in a shopping mall a big shopping mall and so on it's maybe countable infinite can you remember uh, we said the uh, infinite can be put into countable and infinite as well countable infinite so the number of customers arriving on a particular day where x can take uh, on a value 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 up to maybe 1000 or 10000 or 50000 and so on depend on what type of mall is that <coughs> we can count the customers who are coming but there is no finite upper limit on the number that might arrive so that is why we call it as infinite in this case because we can count the number from the uh, entrance we can count the number but we don't know what will be the higher number as it is so we cannot say that uh, it is a finite so it is a infinite right family size is it a finite uh, what uh, sorry uh, discrete or uh, continuous discrete number of dependents reported to tax return in a family uh, in a family number of maybe husband is working wife is working uh, daughter is working son is working so what type of uh, data is that discrete or discrete one discrete so numbers right distance from the uh, home to the shop it is measured in miles but it's continuous it is continuous uh next one is uh, the pet 
owning the number of dogs or cats let's say these are categories 1 2 3 4 1 mean owning no pets at all 2 mean only dog 3 mean only cats 4 mean having both cats and uh, cat or cats and dog and all dogs is it uh, discrete or we are we are ranking right 1 2 3 4 discrete or continuous discrete right right i think uh, i will talk about discrete probability distribution next time any questions